Dutch from All Sing Out Tarot. <clears throat> Here with another installment from the Fly on the Wall series. This is Fly on the Wall number 19. I know I'm going to get cursed out because you guys say, Bella, you're on vacation. You're supposed to be resting. I am resting, meaning I'm not taking any um, appointments, however, for the weekend until Monday. Anyway, um, what's a vacation without tarot? This is my life, guys, so, you know, don't be too hard on me. You know, I, old, how they say it, bad habits die, die hard. <laughs> okay, that's no excuse, but listen, I usually celebrate my, my birthday all weekend long, so. <clears throat> Plus, people are donating. I really appreciate it. Um, and it's forcing me to go out because I got to go spend money, you know. So, I did get out yesterday. I did some shopping. I spun the whole entire day with my daughter. Um, we cooked together, we shopped together, and she did some vlogging and whatever teenagers do and just communicating and stuff. Um, so, this is a hard birthday for me, guys, because this is the first year that I'm doing it without, you know, my, my um, traditions, okay? I don't have my best friend this year. Me and my twin are at each other's throats this year. So, you know, it, it's a very difficult year for me. So, therefore, you know, I got to take baby steps. I plan to cook out today and invite my sister and, you know, uh, some folks over. But they say it's going to rain all day. I don't know. It seems really nice right now. So, I'm not going to jinx it. Whatever. I'll still cook out. It's not going to stop anything. But I just want to throw this out there because I noticed something. I feel like... As I'm on this vacation, I feel like, you know how you have children? Like, even though I have one child, I feel like I have other children that still need me. And <laughs> so, I, you know, because I'm getting all kind of emails. People are still emailing me, even though they know I'm on vacation. You know, enjoy your birthday. Here's a donation. We appreciate you. We love you. You know, just very, very loyal customer and some of them are I've never done a reading for so I definitely appreciate that as well but the one thing that I've noticed is for the zodiac sign of Leo Leo is distressed and depressed honest to God like I, I've never ever known just how bad it was for Leo the zodiac sign of Leo and then I also never known how much the zodiac sign of Leo stick together you know I'm really getting a chance to see that loyalty from Leo's as well as, you know, the pain and the suffering that a lot of Leo's are doing. Okay, so I cannot enjoy this birthday without reaching out to my fellow Leo's, you know, and not just Leo over, I mean, well, Leo definitely it depends on where it is in your chart, especially if it's your rising sign and sun sign because you're having a hard year. Most of you are all having a hard year. Um, but I just want you to know I do love you guys. I love all of you, not just Leo, okay? I do love all of you, Virgo, Taurus. And it, despite the fact that I'm hard on Libra, I do love Libra. It's just that Libra has some bad habits that they need to fix, okay, in order for long-term success, okay? Um, yeah, so... But I love all zodiac signs, okay? I wouldn't be doing this. This is a fly on the wall. I'm not targeting Leo. I am opening up the floor to whoever is going through the situation. I don't know who's going through the situation. <clears throat> I had nothing on the brain. I haven't used my crystals in a week. Could you believe that? A week. I haven't done any crystal energy. It's been a whole week. So, I am strictly moving off the guise of my spirits. Okay, so therefore, let's see what the message is, okay? Fly on the wall, number 19. You guys know how this is done. I just um, meditate. You can start thinking about what you want to know. I will pick this up because I am amazing at astro travel and also remote viewing. So, you know... Um, that's why people get in my email. They say, girl, I sent you a message and you heard it. And then you did the reading on it. Yes. That's how I'm able to do that. Okay. So no psychic business or nothing like that. I'm just really good at astro traveling, remote viewing. Um, 
I'm just moving in and out of dimension. So, so you guys may say it right now. Right now is 3D. Okay, you're watching this on 3D. However, I have already moved further up. Okay, so I may have went to 6D in order to catch what you're doing right now on 3D. Okay, so that's how that works. Okay, so let's see what's going on, guys. I also had to get glasses this weekend, and I actually love them because I don't have headaches anymore. So that's really good. <clears throat> My doctor said I got a stigma, whatever the hell that is. I said, well, all I do is focus on terror all day. Could that be it? Could that be the reason why I got a stigma? I don't even know what that is. Okay. So, two more here, guys. I got a message for you. Um. This is definitely going to be for the zodiac sign of a lot of Leos out there, okay? I have had a huge amount of Leos hit me up about work and career. And oftentimes I don't like to do work and career because of the questions that I'm being asked. <clears throat> so people ask me questions like, um, am I going to be successful down the line? Is this job the best job for me? Is it... Is it wise to move across town? Will I be successful if I move across town? <laughs> I don't like answering questions like that because your ideology of success may not be the ideology of or the way that the spirit guides uh, take you through it. Okay, um, You may find it a burden and oftentimes I do see that people find it a burden. For instance, in 2014 was one of my very, very most difficult years. And um, I had to go homeless because I was unsatisfied with my life. You know, here I am. I'm in nursing. I had a, a, a career, you know, um, went to school for my license as a nurse. And then out of nowhere, I caught a felony. <clears throat> but... Three days before, I had walked in my house. I'm going to tell you the story real quick. I know I talk too much, but you got to hear it so that you can understand why I don't like to give readings on how does it look in the future. I don't like those readings. Okay, so listen. So, I walked in my house one day. My house was really nice. You know, looking at my place now compared to how it was before, my house was laid out, Okay. And I just, one day, I just got really sick. And I said, Spirit, you know, I'm tired of looking at every fucking thing in this house. I want a whole new furnished house. And the way I want it, I don't want you to just take everything from me. I want to be able to donate. And maybe I'll hit the lottery. This is my ideology. This is my thought process. And this is most of your guys' thought process. I want to hit the lottery and I want to have enough money in my bank account so that I can furnish my whole house all over again and be able to donate everything I got in my house right now. Okay? That was the question. That was the prayer. That was, you know, the feeling that was going on inside of me. Okay? Three days later, I get a phone call out of nowhere um, from the sheriff's department that said I had a warrant out for my arrest. Okay? Now, I've never done, well, not, I've done a lot of crime. I'm not going to say I've never done. I've never done anything to the extent of what I was being accused of. I'll put it that way, okay? Uh, felony in the third degree. What, what are you talking about? What, <laughs> Linda? What? <laughs> I thought it was a joke, you know. But it wasn't a joke. And what ended up happening is I was working for the state at the time. And you cannot catch a felony charge, especially, you know, being a nurse um, you cannot catch, you know, a high charge like a felony while you're working in nursing, while you're working for the state. So, you know, even though my union, you know, they fought for me and everything to try to keep my job. I told them I wasn't, you know, guilty of what I was being accused of or whatever. But long story short, I ended up losing that job. Because <clears throat> when the universe takes something and puts something against you, you know, when they're trying to work out something, when you ask the universe for something that you think you want, they don't 
take into consideration the way that you want it to be done. You know, they just take you the best way in order to produce the greatest outcome within you. Okay. So I got the felony and I lost the job. About a month later, I said, I have to close up my house because I cannot afford this without being able to get employment. So I closed up my house. I had to, you know, I dropped down on top of this. I also was praying to spirit to get into union. Okay. Cause this was also the year that I had found out that I was a twin. Okay. I found out that I was, I was a twin flame. <clears throat> so I also wanted to get into union and I wanted a newly furnished house, you know, and I was just, you know, bored with my career, with everything that was going on. I was bored. I was taking for granted what spirit had given me or, you know, what I have built over a long period of time. So anyway, um, I closed up my house and I had to, I had to go down. I had to go really, really low. Do I regret it? No, I do not regret it. Did it hurt at the time? Absolutely. I mean, it was as crushed as your spirit could actually go. I had to move into the projects in the heart of the hood, and I've never lived in the projects. I had to um, live with family members. And this is where I began to learn that there could be some family members that look at you and they've always put you on a pedestal and you've always had and they can't couldn't wait until you got in a position to where you needed them or when you were really low because then their true colors show you know i learned these things okay also spirit told me because I, I can remember crying and sitting in my car that's a good thing i didn't lose my vehicle you know and i was still making payments at this time I had to go down to the bottomless pit and I had to grind and I had to hustle. And I, and I finally, you know, through this experience, I learned <clears throat> not to place judgment on the single mother that don't have a job that has to maybe be out here, you know, uh, having sex in order to get money to be able to feed her child. I also learned about the drug dealer that, you know, may have done something when they were younger and they caught a case and the job market was you know denying them employment so it forced them back into that lifestyle because it was easy money i had to learn these things i had to be able to sell drugs and 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 work you know jobs that were really really below me or very degrading okay um i had to really go down to nothing all right and I kept asking spirit, why would you do this to me? Why, what have I ever done that deserved to be this low? And spirit said to me, well, first of all, you moving down into the projects <clears throat> and moving to the bottomless pit, that's you. Help, that's, that's helping you to understand your twin flame. Because the type of person that you're going after, you see him and you see him being a millionaire now, but you don't know what it took for him to get there. Okay, so, you know, there's a lack of understanding between the two of you and your communication. So if you want to have what he has, then you have to walk the way he went. So I have to, you know, I had to really, really, you know, uh, be suppressed and, and really be down to nothing. And, you know, homeless. I mean, I got to a point where I was homeless and it was just like, oh, my God, I can't do this no more. I mean, I was breaking down. And, um... All of this over me coming in the house and being frustrated or bored with my career and bored of looking at my house. All I asked for was furniture. I mean, you gave me fucking homeless. I lost everything. All I asked for was new furniture. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so all I asked for was new furniture. You know, I, I, I was a little bored, but I wasn't willing to lose my career. I didn't want to lose my career. I, I, did, I didn't understand. Why did you have to take me that way? Why did you break me down to nothing, take my license completely off of me, and, and take me through a real struggle? But let me tell you something about me. And I'm sorry that I put this in the middle of this video. I don't know why. Maybe somebody needs to hear this, okay? I meet people sometimes. <clears throat> I had met someone uh, maybe earlier this month. 
And when I spoke on the phone to her, she automatically, from the moment I got on the phone with her, she rubbed me the wrong way. She rubbed me the wrong way because there was no humility in her voice, okay? You know, when people sit back and they say, oh, well, I'm always blessed and highly favored, and, you know, I want to know if I'm going to be successful, but everything always work out for me, and, you know, and, and it rubbed me the wrong way, and, and, and I had to, and that's one of the people that I had to refund her money. And the reason I did this is because this. It's very easy to think you're hot shit when you've went to school and you got a degree and you're working in that field and you make more than the average person and you think you're safe, you know. You think you're safe. You think nothing can go wrong. I always have a good job. Just as well as I thought. I went to school. I got my license. Fuck it. I always have a good job. There's always a high demand for registered nurses. I will always be successful. This is the way I thought. But people that tend to go that way are very egotistical. And they never consider that the moment you get bored <laughs> within your career, <laughs> the moment you do not appreciate the way that you were privileged in life, that very instance, it could be taken from you. One simple prayer, one word could cause you to lose it all. I always thought I was high shit, you know, because I, I had it, you know. I would be considered born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Totally disregarding and not understanding women that couldn't get a job. Men that had to sell drugs. How can you sit back and think that you're a bad bitch or you're a hard dude or whatever and you've never had to fight? You've never had to fight. You know, going to school, you know, and waking up every morning and maybe you're in a, in a hostile household and, and you know, your, your mom stress you out or your dad stress you out or whatever, you know, or you had to deal with molestation. You think that that was a struggle. You think that that's difficult until you've learned to walk in the shoes of someone who is less fortunate. I'll just say this. I went through that process for two years. In my mind, I just knew that I will, you know, I'll be out of this fucking storm in 30 days, okay? I'll straighten this shit out and I will have my license back because this is a total mistake, you know? I've been down there talking to the court people and shit. You know, listen, Linda, okay? I never did anything wrong in my life. I've earned my way in society, you know, just talking shit. I did not know that it was going to, you know, spirit was going to take me through it for two years. It was a very humbling experience. And I will never in my life, ever, judge no one. I will never judge a, another person a day in my life. Because you don't know what it took <clears throat> to get them where they are. You, you, you never know. You have no idea, especially if you were privileged. But I can honestly say, after that situation, I am a bad bitch, okay? And on top of that, the true me emerged from that situation. And also, had I not went through that way, I would never be able to sit here on this recorder and talk to you about life's issues about tarot and what it means and how to take tarot into uh, a physical experience. I would never be able to do that. I learned all of that within that two years of the downfall. I have been at the lowest that you could ever go. And never in a million years did I ever think that I would be on YouTube doing tarot readings, never. 
there's there was nothing in my history that said that I would go towards YouTube and videos and, and tarot readings. Nothing. But the experience that I went through, it taught me to humble myself and to be able to deal with people from all walks of life. Every situation that a person could ever go through. So, taking it back to my original statement. This is the reason why I do not like to do... Am I going to be successful in the future? Is it a good idea for me to move? Because what you may consider perfection or hot shit because you've always had it, spirit has some obstacle courses, and that's what I call them, obstacle courses, for you to complete that may not look anything like what you could have ever prayed for or ever imagined. And it happens to all of us everybody at one time in our life are going to have to go this way to have a deeper understanding of who you are to know whether you're really strong to know whether you really have endurance okay so that next job that you take could be the very job that causes you to lose it all in order for you to really be successful okay being successful is not getting a good job and making money being successful is being content and happy and having passion and drive in that thing that you're doing. Okay? That's what success really equates to. So, when people call me and say, am I going to be successful in this job? I really get stuck with, you know, what, what the fuck do you mean by successful? <laughs> Shit. I mean, listen, Linda. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question without offending someone. When you take a look into your future, when you take a look into how does the future look with my finances, well, it looks like a fucking roller coaster to me. That's what it looks like because naturally it's going to go up and down, up and down, up. It's going to. That's just a natural thing, okay? It, it's inevitable. Everybody wants to be rich. Everybody. I don't know one person that want to be poor as fuck. Okay? Everybody has a dream of being totally successful and financially stable. Everybody. But I think that before you ask the question, you have to consider... Do I have the endurance in order to gain that success. And what does success mean to me? Okay. Long story short, Linda, don't open Pandora's box. Don't open it because you may find out some shit that you don't want to know. Okay. You may find out that when you do take that that uh, job and you have to move out of this country, out of the state, that when you get there, you're not going to have nobody around you and you're going to be totally alone and you got to be homeless for seven months and you get, you may lose that job only because you had to align with a fucking twin flame. <laughs> Don't look into Pandora's box because... I promise you, it's not going to look the way you had, had it in mind. It's not. Just like when I told Spirit, I want you to furnish my whole house. I want it new, brand new stuff, money in a bank. I don't want to lose everything. I want to be able to give it away and then refurnish it because I have the money in a bank to do it. That don't sound anything like what the fuck they gave me, okay? And I lost literally every stitch, everything, everything. And guess where I lost it? In the storage. They repossessed my storage and took everything. So Spirit gave me all brand new stuff. Everything looked different. But I had to lose it all in order to get something of value. I had to lose it all in order to start over and, and get that brand new thing. 
And I never did get that money in the bank that I asked for, you know. But it made me a better person overall, okay? I would like to thank everyone that listened to that video. Um, every now and then I'll drop out some bits and pieces of my life and what I had to go through uh, that led up to tarot. But um, thank you for everybody that listened to that because not everybody got the time. I understand that everybody, you know, everything, everybody want everything fast, you know. They got to go. They got to they gotta get to work. They don't want a long ass video. Um, for those of you that fast forward uh, past the 20 minute mark, welcome. I am Bella Dutch from All Seeing Eye Tarot. And I'm here with another installment from the Fly on the Wall series. This is Fly on the Wall number 19. I've already shuffled the cards. If you watched the first video, then you see me do so. So I'm now going to lay them. Here we go. The Ten of Wands. The Three of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles. Nine of Wands. Four of Pentacles. And the Nine of Swords. Under the Ten of Wands, we got the Five of Cups. Under the Three of Pentacles, we have the Six of Swords. Under the Page of Pentacles, we have the Moon. Under the Nine of Wands is the Page of Swords. Under the Four of Pentacles, we have the Empress. And under the Nine of Swords is the Sun. <clears throat> What's the advice that you have for this individual going through this? Three of Wands. And the two of wands okay so I know these cards are very dark and it's hard to uh, really see them especially with the glares and everything but so for those of you that read cards <clears throat> even though I don't follow the rules you know I kind of lay them in front of you so you can see it I'm using a Ludi Lescott deck you guys know I love this deck I've had one of them burn up on me, catch on fire doing one person. And she was generous enough to send me this deck all over again. So I had like two of these decks. I love this deck. And if you would like to send me um, any decks that you think that you want to see me use in my readings, you can hit me up at All Sing Eye Tarot, and I will give you um, the mailing address in order to do so. And I do appreciate that as well. Okay. Now, for the clarification, I'm going to use the Mona Lisa uh, tarot by uh, Los Carbo, I think. Yeah, Los Carbo. Artwork by uh, Palo Martinello. Yeah. Tarot de Mona Lisa. All right. And then this is the Ludi Lescott. Okay. All righty. So here we go. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Okay. Now, people have, that have been with me for a while, um, for this year and a half that I've been on YouTube, they have learned to pay attention to my message in the very beginning. And the reason being is because usually what I am describing in the very beginning, I'm never speaking in redundance, you know. I'm never giving pointless messages or just talking about myself. Usually, I am giving you a blueprint or a layout to what's to come when I lay the cards down. So I'm speaking the same exact things that the cards is going to uh, discuss or talk about within a particular person's situation. So people that have been with me for a while, you already know what it is because you listened to the beginning of this message and you heard it very clearly and you know that the message that I am about to um, explain on these tarot cards is exactly what I told you already in the beginning. I just gave you a visual as to uh, what I'm about to discuss, okay? Now, we have the Ten of Wands with the Five of Cups, the Three of Pentacles, and the Six of Swords. I honestly feel like the individual that I'm speaking to right now was a person that may have been overwhelmed, okay? Now, this could be anywhere from being overwhelmed in an employment situation are being overwhelmed within a relationship, okay? Um, 
this is dealing with something that you begin to take for granted, okay? Because maybe, you know, uh, within a career, you, you've reached everything that you could reach, you know, um, you already have your license, you've been in the field for a very long time, and you have begun to take it for granted and feeling as if you need to do something else, kind of like your mark hasn't really been left on the world, or you lay in the background and you're not able to be all that you can possibly be. So the Five of Cups comes right up under that. And the reason the Five of Cups comes right up under that is because some of you have made a decision or some of you have had a prayer or you spoke to spirit and you told them that you were bored or you were unhappy or, you know, um, you no longer wanted to be in this relationship. You know, it was a little overwhelming. It was too time consuming. You have to do everything by yourself. Or you told them the same thing about a career, okay? And what ended up happening is that you lost that career with this Five of Cups, okay? You, you lost that career, you lost that relationship, and you had to move on to something else, all right? Now, for a lot of you, this is going to represent your uh, financial status, your career status, and, you know, um, corresponding with your spirituality, okay? So after having your little prayer, or whatever way you prayed about it, or whatever way that you said to spirit, you know, I'm kind of bored, can you shake things up a little bit, or give me a little bit of excitement, or some entertainment or something, you ended up speaking your way right out of that situation that may have really been perfect for maybe someone else, but for you, it kind of started to feel too much of a burden. You know, you were carrying too many burdens. Maybe you were... Um, uh, the manager of some sort of big firm, uh, a, a company or something like that, or you were the sole provider of a relationship and your partner didn't really help you. Everything rests on your shoulders. Everything was determined by the way that you handled things, and you got bored of that. So Spirit said, okay, well, we're going to relieve you of your duty. Now, just like I stated in that message, and if you haven't listened to it at this point, I think that you should stop this message, rewind to the very beginning, listen to that 20 minutes of me blabbering. Because when I blabber, I'm only giving you a visual of what these tarot cards are going to explain to you. Okay, so rewind it. Slow your roll, Linda. Go backwards. Listen to the message that I gave you previously. Because if this is you in this situation and you're handling something of this kind, then you need to rewind because I was talking to you, okay? So the Three of Pentacles hits with the Six of Swords. The Three of Pentacles just represents your new situation, whatever you're working within as of now, okay? So um, maybe you are uh, LPN. I'm just giving an example. You're an LPN. And you have all the credentials in order to be an LPN. And you've been at working at LPN for a very long time. And you're bored with it. You want to expand your consciousness. You want to um, go back to school and to be something better, to be something bigger. The Three of Pentacles kind of represents that you're in a situation in which you are working towards... Uh, creating a, a, a bigger position for yourself now with working towards this position for yourself the six of Pentac the six of swords comes up because it kind of represents that you are a person who likes to stay with repetition when everything gets discombobulated you feel uncomfortable okay and that's usually what happens when you feel um, overwhelmed by a certain situation or you disregard the hard work that spirit has put into something and you begin to get bored then they take that situation and they put you in a little bit more of a hectic hectic um, position and now you're overwhelmed you're scared you don't know exactly you know what this position or, or where you're at right now some of you are going to school some of you had to move from your current state, um, but it just represents that you're back at the drawing board and you're at the bottom and you're working your way up. And there may be people that are around you that are watching you and trying to see if you're qualified for the next position or the, uh, uh, what do they call that? Promotion. Yeah. 
um, they're seeing if you're qualified for the next promotion. Now you have the Six of Swords that is right under that. The Six of Swords is any situation to where you have moved out of something that you found uncomfortable, something that you found that you had too many responsibilities. You moved out of that situation. But the problem is you are the type of person that you know, you cannot function in a position that you are not being recognized in, okay? So when you don't have a lot of responsibilities, um, you tend to feel looked over, passed over for the next individual. Maybe someone that is more qualified for the position, okay? So you're, you're looked over. So now you have fallen into uh, something else. Now that may be, for a lot of you, it may be a position that was less than the one that you're in, okay? Uh, it kind of reminds me of a police officer who may have been out on the road and he may have been, you know, doing drug busts or, you know, uh, out on the field taking care of... Um, crimes that that are you know open you know crimes that they actually have to go and respond to a call or something like that okay and then you know when you're unsatisfied with that then maybe something has occurred to make you a beat cop now you you carry a flashlight and maybe some restraints and some mace or something like that but before you had a gun you see what I'm saying so this is sort of like uh, you may consider this as a demotion all right. Now, with the Six of Swords, the Six of Swords also represents taking with you all of the memories that came from the previous position. All right. So this could also be equivalent if we were speaking about love. This would also be equivalent to someone who had a relationship going with someone else. And, you know, there may have been some sort of commitment with you and that person. They may have become overwhelming. They wanted you to do everything. OK, you may have been in a position of what they know or what they call wifey okay and this person called you and expected you to earn their clothes um, search for them a job or you know anything that had a lot of responsibility that came with it okay and you weren't happy with that all right so maybe you had some sort of breakup and now you're re-entering into this relationship but now you got to work your way back up to be in a position of wifey again now they look at you as friend Okay, so you're remembering a position that you held previously, and now you're starting to say, damn, I shouldn't open up my big mouth. I feel like I'm being demoted. So now you're in this person's life, and they're putting you in a friend zone. They no longer want a commitment with you, and you just are somebody that, you know, they tell half the story to. So they, didn't know, they no longer um, trust you, and they no longer give you as much responsibility as they gave you when they considered you to be wifey. All right. So I'm just throwing that out there because that could be your situation as well. Um, when it comes to love. OK, so I'm going back and forth between career and love because this is one of those readings, one of those fly on the walls where we're speaking of either love or we are speaking of career. OK, for a lot of you, it may be love for a lot of other ones. It may be, you know, a career. Okay, so now you've been relieved of your duties. The Six of Swords is being relieved of your duties. Now you're in a position to where you're being watched, okay? You were the supervisor of a company, and now you happen to be the employee. Maybe because you want to go into a higher rank and a higher position. So before, where there weren't people watching you because they trusted you with a lot of responsibility, now you have become under the watchful eye of some superior over top of you. Okay? And you got to go this way so that you can be successful because you took for granted the position that they actually gave you the first time around. All right. So now we move into the now position and we have the page of Pentacles with the moon. The page of Pentacles is any course of study. All right. So another thing it could be is that spirit could be testing you to find out how passionate are you about that pinnacle? How passionate are you about that position that you have? How passionate are you about that lover that you say that you're in love with? Okay, the moon card represents anything that is of mystery. So something that you cannot see outright. It could be, um, it could also be, you know, how I de described in the very beginning of the reading, how I described how I wanted furniture, but I wanted it in a particular manner. 
Okay, listen, I want you to, you know, uh, give me money in the bank so that I can be able to give the furniture away versus losing everything. All right. The moon card could uh, represent illusion or the way that you may have thought that this thing would turn out for you, but it did not go that way. Okay. The Nine of Wands comes in, and it comes in with the Page of Swords. The Nine of Wands is about repetition. It represents uh, things that you do, and you do it the same way all the time, okay? It could also represent that you could be holding your guard up against a particular lover that you have lost interest in, but you stay in that situation because you feel that there is still something left over that you need to learn, okay? The Page of Swords is about secrecy, and it's also about a learning um, a learning uh, moment in your life, okay? So it could be that spirit may be telling you, listen, this situation that we put you in, it kind of seems very familiar to you, but the truth of the matter is that we just want you to shut up you know, and just take notes, okay? So when you see the Page of Swords, you know that it's about shut up and take notes, okay? Don't speak unless spoken to. Uh, don't give your opinion unless we ask for it, you know, uh, that sort of thing, okay? So the way that that can work when it comes to a love situation, it could be that you have uh, quite an interest in a particular person. You may have been further the last time that you did it, so he may have been putting you in a position, or she, in a position of wifey. They may have been sharing a lot of information with you. They may have been depending on you for a lot of different things, okay? And now, you have voiced your opinion, and you told them that they you were overwhelmed, and they don't never support you. They don't never help you. So now, you know, they fell back. They don't call you as much as they used to call you, Um they don't tell you everything that they used to tell you. This could be in friendship. This could be in romantic relationship. It does not matter, okay? This is about having a position, and you had a position that was a lot closer. You had more responsibility, but then you opened up your big mouth, and you lost that position, and now you're in a position of starting all over again, building up trust with this individual, um, rebuilding the friendship but doing it in a way in which there is 50 50 not so much as 90 you know 90 10 or 80 20 you know that sort of thing okay now um <clears throat> when i look at the page of pentacles and i see the moon card it kind of represents and reminds me of Somebody who has been in, in a position, looking at the cards and the way they flow. Somebody who has been in a position of wifey, you got dropped down a couple notches, and now this person looks at you like a friend, and you may be viewing them falling for someone else, okay? So they only call you um, every blue moon, and when they call you, they usually call you about a particular issue. But they don't want you to do anything about it. They're just calling you to get some sort of advice from you. Okay, but they may start to take that responsibility that they once put on you and they put it on a new individual. So you are sitting back and you're watching them uh, be with a new girl or be with a new guy, have a new relationship, start a new relationship, that sort of thing. And because it was overwhelming, it was too much for you. You really can't say much about it. You just have to sit back and watch it go down and say, shit, I shouldn't have opened up my big mouth. Okay, I should not have. Um, took for granted the position that this person once put me in. Okay? As far as employment is concerned, um, this could be one of those situations where you at a period of learning. You're at a period of maybe you went back to school for your current career. And maybe, you know, you had to leave the job where you were the supervisor. And now you're starting a job where you are the employee. Okay, you may have been the manager at your previous job, and now you're starting the uh, position to where you are the employee and you have a superior over top of you. And even though you know the things that this superior is teaching you, it kind of represents that when we gave you the responsibility, this is what Spirit is saying to you. Excuse me. When we gave you the responsibility, you took it for granted. You said it was too much. Now, we've put you down a couple notches. Now, you are under the guise or under the authority of someone else who could handle the position. So, watch and learn, okay? These, these four cards right here says to me, watch and learn, okay? Watch and learn. Um, 
then as we move towards the near future cards, we have the Four of Pentacles coupled with the Empress. The Four of Pentacles kind of represents that maybe you got into the position, you're starting to learn that maybe this really wasn't the feel for me. Maybe I only got into the position because of the money that they provided to me. Okay? But now I'm learning that wherever my passion goes, my money goes. Okay? So if you don't have an actual passion, this is like a transition of being in a job that you may have gotten a position that you're not qualified for. You may have got considered to be a manager when you really don't have the um, intelligence to be that manager. You really don't have uh, the qualifications, but they actually put you in a position. When you got in a position, you took it for granted. Okay, it could have been some insecurities. When I look at this Nine of Swords with the Sun, it could have been some insecurities, some things that you took for granted. You were only in the position because of the financial support that it provided you. But when it comes down to actually doing your job and knowing your job, you really didn't have those skills. Okay. The Four of Pentacles and the Empress card will represent anybody that is put in a position that <clears throat> has to be um, a ruler, it has to be a manager. You don't have the qualifications for the job. And every day that you go home, you may be afraid that you did something wrong or that you overlooked a critical detail. Okay, I don't know if you guys truly understand me, but what I'm trying to say is being in a position that you're not qualified for that causes a bit of anxiety because you're always worried about doing the right thing. And you may have overstepped your boundaries. You may have told spirit, listen, I just wanted a job where I made a lot of money. I didn't want all these responsibilities. I kind of feel a little pressure from my employees or my employer, my superiors over top of me. I feel pressured. So if I, if I make a decision or I decide to do something, I feel like, you know, the rug is going to be pulled from under my feet because I'm not even qualified for this position. You know, I was looking at the coins. So this is somebody that may have been looking at the financial benefit versus the actual skill to do the job. So with the Nine of Swords, it kind of represents all of your fears that you go through without anybody looking. The Sun card reveals that this is the one thing that Spirit was trying to teach you. When they demoted you and you were able to be the student versus the teacher, then you begin to realize, I really don't have a passion to be the manager of that position. I really don't have the skills to actually... Um, you know, uh, manage people in the way that I may have seen somebody else that actually is qualified for the position. So this is also moving into a situation to where it always, and I always tell you guys this, you will go through situations to where yourself will be exposed, your flaws, your insecurities, the things that you do that are not uh, considered uh, worthy of having that position. Your flaws are being exposed, and the flaws that is being exposed may be that I really don't care about the position the way that uh, this person, I went to school for 15, 20 years. I don't care about that, you know, but they put me in this position because they felt like they seen something in me that actually uh, was successful. This could also be, and I need you to listen. One of those positions to where you keep asking for success or greatness or you keep asking your spirit guides to put you over another individual and they give you that position and it's one of those type of situations where you have to go through the process to recognize that you're really not qualified for that position or you really didn't love that position as much as somebody who may have went to school for the to gain the actual credentials to run the position. Okay. Um, it could also be for those of you that keep praying for a husband or keep praying for a wife and they actually give it to you and then you actually regret the responsibilities and then you realize I'm not really ready to be a wife because I'm not attentive. I'm not, you know, I'm very passionate about this thing that I'm asking for. Okay, so that's what I feel when it comes to these cards because we have the three of wands with the two of wands. The three of wands is kind of like looking out into the future to where you want to go and the two of wands is facing reality to where you actually are. So it's kind of like I'm asking for something that I really cannot handle. 
okay so I may name this message underqualified because this is representing anyone who is in a position because you got the position because you kept praying about it not because you have the experience behind it and as you go through the position because spirit is not above putting you in a position that you're underqualified for only to take you through certain experiences that constantly test your will and it constantly shows you that you don't have passion for this you ask for it because you wanted to be egotistical you ask for it because you wanted to see everybody you wanted everybody to see you in this position you ask for it because you've seen everybody in a relationship and that's what you wanted you thought you wanted for yourself but you really don't have the guts the glory the willpower to have endurance to really work through that and that's what people kind of fail at you know I get people that say to me often Bella I listened to somebody else I, somebody else read me and told me I was a psychic somebody else told me that I was intuitive okay and you think I should move into that and then they open up a terror business and it flops why does it flop? Because you don't have the passion, the desire that it takes to keep that thing going. The same with love. Somebody told me I was going to marry this guy. Meanwhile, you have problems with cheating and you haven't even found what you really like. So then you get with someone who is attentive, who wants to love you, who is offering you commitment, and then you can't settle down with them because the truth of the matter is you're not ready to be wifey. You're not ready to be a husband. You are still playing the field trying to figure out what it is that you want. Okay? So, this flower on the wall was to break down anybody that finds yourself in a position that you are underqualified for. And you may have asked for it for selfish purposes because you wanted to be better than your peers, because you wanted to fit in with your peers, but there is a certain mechanism, there is a certain experience that is necessary before spirit could actually give you that which you asked for. Okay, So if you ask to be a wife, but you've only had one, two relationships in your whole life, how could you know that you're ready to be a wife? So spirit will test you and they will actually give you a good person in your life that you'll end up screwing over. You ask to be a registered nurse when you only have qualifications to be an LPN. Spirit will give you a position that requires registered nursing experience and you only have LPN experience. You understand? I hope you understand what I'm saying to you. This is about those of you that are in a position, whether it's love, whether it's work and career, that you're underqualified for. You ask for it, but spirit is about, I call it an embarrassment. I call it spirit embarrassing you. You're asking for this position. You're asking for this relationship, but you're underqualified for it. Therefore, if you're underqualified for it, then you don't have the passion of endurance. Endurance is the thing that keeps you moving forward and being successful in your career. Endurance is the thing that keeps you married for 20, 30 years. Okay? And that comes with having passion for that thing. If you don't have the passion and you got a relationship that's supposed to last you 30, 40 years, you'll destroy it. If you don't have the passion and you got a position that you're underqualified for, you're going to eventually get bored in that position and you're going to ask for something else. Okay? I hope I made sense to you. <clears throat> like, share, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit your notification button. As far as the advice for those of you that ask, okay, well, Bella, you got the two cards for the advice cards, the three of wands with the two of wands. Three of wands with the two of wands simply tells you to stay at what you're, stick with what you're good at. And don't go looking for a fight in an area that you are not experienced in, because chances are you'll probably lose that fight. The three of wands represent establishment. It represents somebody that has worked hard for the position. Now, if I got the two of wands with the three of wands, just like that, then it would kind of represent that you're more than qualified and you're ready to move into the thing that you're asking for. 
but it came backwards. So the Three of Wands with the Two of Wands kind of represents that you're underqualified for the position. You're going to be showed that you're underqualified for the position. You're not going to succeed in that certain situation, and that's okay. I often tell people to be good on your level. Don't ask for a twin flame when you're still at a soulmate energy. Don't ask for a soulmate when you're still at a catalyst energy because it's going to show exactly where you are. I don't care how many psychics you call and this is the thing that probably drives me crazy more crazy than anything in the world is those of you that ask for a position that you're not qualified in so you ask for twin flames you ask for soulmates and you're no you're nowhere near there okay and you cannot have the endurance to actually be a twin flame twin flames takes a long time to develop if you're asking for a twin flame, then you have to be comfortable with staying alone for very, very large periods of time. So, you know, if you're able, you know, if you want a twin flame and you want to be considered as a twin, then you have to show me that you've been alone for eight plus years and you are able to can, you know, um, entertain yourself to be content and to also help people without having a relationship. Okay, you ask for a life partner and you want a life partner in your life, then you have to be willing to tell that life partner the things that hurt you that they do repetitiously in order to be able to move towards a union with that person. Okay, so so many people think that they want things because they see it on someone else, and because the shoe doesn't fit you, but you see it on someone else, it can be the biggest flop in history. You can actually hurt yourself more than you actually help yourself. If you see what looks good on your girlfriend, your girlfriend been married 20, 40 years, and you have been single jumping from man to man, then all you can do is be good on your level. You can't ask spirit for the same thing that Veronica has or Tina has. Tina has been married 15, 20 years, but Tina has endurance. You do not have the endurance, and as soon as your husband or boyfriend you know, uh, does something that you don't like, you throw it away. Well, Tina has not thrown that away. Veronica has stuck through past, you know, all of the things that she had to deal with with her husband because she has endurance for that thing. She has experience in order to stick with that thing. You, on the other hand, you're asking for it from an egotistical purpose. You're not asking for it because you actually have passion for it. So this is about exposing the frauds exposing those of you that are asking for things from spirit they're giving it to you and you're destroying it okay so that's what this reading was all about i love you so much like share comment below Sub subscribe if you haven't already hit your notification button those of you that would like to donate you hit my about section on the about section you'll see a big all-seeing eye it looks like numbers and workouts or whatever on my main page right in the corner there's a thing that says support my channel if you would like to support my channel donate send me a birthday gift get back to you make sure you leave your email so I can get back to you telling you how much I thank you okay and if you want to make it really good just leave your birthday all right and maybe I'll give you a message on your particular situation okay once you donate so I love you much I appreciate you until next time, I love you.